Hello YouTube, I hope you're doing well. We're on code.org, we're on unit four, lesson four, part two. When you get to this project, you should take a deep breath. I feel like you've been thrown into the deep end of the pool and you haven't learned how to swim yet. That might be a little bit exaggerated, but now we're going to put to practice everything that we've been learning over the previous three lessons. When you open this part of the project, all you're given is two comments. And it tells us that we need to be able to create and assign values to your variables, and you need to add your event handlers. And of course, you want to couple this with the unit four sheet from code.org. And you should have already completed step one, step two. And we're looking at step three, which says, and I'll go ahead and throw this up on the screen, that we need to write our code. Some things that we're going to be looking at is to create all the variables from the table above, which is on a different step. We need to give our variables a starting value using the assignment operator. We're going to create blank event handlers on event for each of the screen elements in the table above. We're going to write our code to make the up button work and test it out. We'll know if it's working correctly if the likes count goes up every time you click on it. We're going to do the same thing for the down button. We're going to write code to make our comment button work. And then it says to use your debugging skills to identify unexpected behavior and fix your program. It tells us that we should be commenting out our code that explains each part of our handlers, which is good practice. And it says if we have any issues that we should check the help and tips tab for ideas about programming patterns that we can use. And then extension ideas it says that we should be able to set text in the new comment to blank after the comment has been added. And it says that we can add the sound for each of the buttons. Before I begin, I'm going to go ahead and click on the show text because I want to add a couple of lines here in this top part. Just for me, this is personal preference. I'm going to go back to the show blocks. The first thing that I want to do is I need to create my variables. The question is, what variables do we need to create? Well, the first one is one for our likes here. We need to be able to count the amount of likes. So let's go to the variables section. We're going to select this one, declare a variable, and we're going to drop that in. We're going to call this variable likes, and we want to set this to the number zero. So now that we have our first variable added, let's go ahead and add another one. We'll click and drag this one over because we're going to create it and define it at the same time. This one we'll go ahead and call comment. And you can use the text here or you can create your own message. Remember, whatever you decide to put, you need to put in quotation marks. We'll just do all, and we'll go ahead and end that with the quotation marks. And we don't need that extra space, so we'll just go ahead and clear that out. So now we've created our variables. We can check that off our list of things that we need to do. Now we need to begin creating our event handlers. Let's go ahead and add some comments to this part before we begin. Let's go ahead and start off by stating what is the purpose of what we're going to do. The first one we're going to create is using the up button. So what's the purpose of this? The purpose is that when the button is clicked, the likes go up by one. We'll add some more comments here. What's the function do? The function is going to use the counter pattern with the event to add one to our variable. So we'll go ahead and type that. Don't be afraid to use the comment as we're doing here. More is better, even though it seems like we're doing a lot here. Remember, the purpose of comments is for you and maybe a partner or somebody else to be able to quickly look through your code and say, oh, this is supposed to do this. Or if it's been a long time for you, Oh, this is what I was thinking. We'll go ahead and add what's this going to do. And what it's going to do is update the likes on the screen with the new likes amount. And you can use my comments. You can use your own comments. It's okay if you use your own comments. And then one other thing that we're supposed to do is in the extension part of this, it says that we need to add a sound when clicked. All right, so now that we've done all that, let's go ahead and begin doing this. Let's go to the UI controls. 
we're going to do on event. For our ID, you can hover over this to type it out. Or if we click the drop down, we can see what's been created here. And for this, we want to click on up button. We want it to be on click. That's perfect. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to update our variable here likes. So I'm going to go to the variable section. We're going to use the assign a variable here and drag it in. For the X value, we're going to go ahead and add in likes. And remember what we want to do is we want to update this likes up here. Zero needs to become one when clicked. And then as that's updated, keep updating with the new number. So we're going to go to the math part of this. We're going to click and drag that over. And for this left side of this, we're going to go ahead and type in likes and we're going to do plus one. So when this is clicked, that's what should happen. Let's go back to our UI controls because the next thing that we need to set here is set our text. So under UI controls, we'll go ahead and click and drag that below our likes variable update. What we're looking for is the likes counter. What we want here is the likes counter output. And we want this text right here, likes colon a space and the new number. To do that, we're going to go to the math section and we're just going to go ahead and click and drag the addition over here. So let's go ahead and type that in. Remember, because we're adding text here, we need to include that in quotation marks. So we'll begin with quotes. We'll type in likes. Don't forget that space because if you don't, your two things will just be joined together and we want to end with a quotation mark. Now, what are we going to add here? We're going to add likes, which is our variable. And then the last thing that we're going to do here is go back to our UI controls. We're going to click on play sound. We have the option here of changing the sound that's given or we can leave the default. It's up to you. For now, we'll just leave this here. All right, we've done that. We've created our first thing. Let's go in and test it and see what happens. We'll click run. All right, we can see that the up button works. Just make sure the down button doesn't work. So that's the next thing that we're going to add. Let's reset here. And we're going to go through the same process here. I'm even going to copy the same notes. I'm not going to talk through this. So I'm just going to continue to build this. Now you can go to the show text, select the text, copy it and paste it below. For this, I want to encourage you not to do that. Because again, the purpose of this is not only to build the app, but for you to feel comfortable working through the user interface that we have here, the different tools that you have in your toolbox and copying and pasting that is a little bit like taking a shortcut. So I would encourage you don't do that. So as I quickly ran through that, you can see that I clicked and dragged the wrong sections in at times. And all I had to do was pull it out or delete it out. Wasn't a big deal. Let's go ahead and run our program to see if this works. And we can see it does. If we add, if we click on the thumbs up button, it adds. If we click on the thumbs down button, it subtracts. So now we have that part of the app complete. Now what we need to do is start focusing on the comment section of the screen here. To begin, let's go ahead and begin by adding our comments. The purpose of this part of the app is when we click this right here, the comment button, that it updates the comments on the screen that we see here. So let's go ahead and type that. The purpose here is to use the variable with the string concatenation pattern to add a new comment to previous comments. So we'll go ahead and type that as well. Let's go ahead and add another comment here because what we're going to do is also mention that this sets the text on the screen and it's going to display all the comments. Again, more comments is better. Don't be afraid to add too many comments. It's okay if you do. 
So let's go to our UI controls because that's where we need to be. We're going to do a new on event. On the event, we want to select this right here, comment button. So let's click the drop down here and we'll select comment button. When clicked is appropriate, so we'll keep that. Let's go to our variables. And what we want to do is we're going to update our comment variable. So we'll do this. We'll type in comment because that's what we call our variable at the top comment. In this section, we want the comment, but we also want it to break to a new line. So because of that, we're going to do this math function. And I'm going to get a little ahead of myself because we're not there yet, but I'm actually going to add another plus to this right side of the addition. The first thing that we need to think about is the comment plus. Remember, we're adding that return. So we're going to do quotes, the slash in, and then ending our quote. But this is where we need to put in the get text. So we're going to do UI controls. We're going to drag over get text to this section to the right. And right here, what we want to do is update the new comment. So if we look here, new comment input, that's what we're going to add. And then the last part of this is we were told that we needed to set our text next. So we're under UI controls. We're going to select this right here, set text. For this, we want the all comments. So let's click the drop down. And what we want is all comments output. We want to erase this, including the quotes. And what we want to do is use our variable comment. And let's see if that works. Let's click run. Type in cat, put this down and notice it went ahead and it erased the previous default that they had there because we didn't use the same comment that they had. We had all and then we added cat. And so now if we add another one. We'll click this. Notice that it adds. But something that we were told that we need to update is we want to clear this out. So let's reset our app. This time we're going to click on set property and let's click and drag that down underneath. We want this right here, new comment. We'll click here. We'll select new comment input. We don't want width here. We're going to change this to text and then we're going to clear out text. And so we're just going to have the quotation marks. Let's go ahead and run this again. Type in cat, exclamation mark. And notice it adds our original comment. It does the return. It puts our new comment down and it clears out that box for our new comment input. Not going to lie, this was a lot. I want to encourage you to not take shortcuts when you're working through this. If you use this video to work through this project, I want to encourage you to go to the version history and start from the beginning again and try and do it without the video helps. Again, I know I've said this before. The purpose of this project is not for you to get it correct. I mean, yes, that's a goal. But what you should be wanting to do is to feel comfortable being able to create the app and doing it on your own. So doing it and being able to connect the reasoning behind what you're using in the tools again by yourself. You might need to clear out the version history a couple of times until you feel comfortable. And then once you've done that, go ahead and make sure you hit that finish button.